Welcome to another episode of the Lone Recruiter Podcast. I'm your host, Brett Clemenson, and if you're a recruiter, out on your own, or just lacking general guidance or mentorship, then you've come to the right place. Our episodes are to the point. They are designed to give you the motivation, the advice, and the strategies you need to succeed as a lone recruiter. So join us, grab a cup of coffee, and let's take your desk to another level. Now, I am continually asked how on earth... I get through the volume of work I do with everything that I have to get done outside of my desk, right? And to put you into context, I'm a 700K a a year desk. We have, I also founded and run uh, an agency of uh, 15 plus. We're currently scaling that business and we're we're trying to onboard five people at a time, uh, five people a quarter. Um, And I'm also running this podcast, which is three episodes a week. Plus, I'm a father of two kids, husband to a wife, um, and I and I actually have weekends. I don't work past six p.m. ever. I don't start work generally until nine or ten a.m. and I go to the gym three to four days a week and I play football. I get a lot done, and people go, "How on earth do you do that?" And I don't know. I mean, I'm super. I'm actually. I've always said my entire life, I'm an incredibly lazy individual, but that laziness. Um, comes out as super efficient. I just see the straightest line to something and I go that route, right? I don't overcomplicate it by overthinking it. I don't, I don't waste time. I hate gaps between tasks because that's just air. It's just wasted time. And so I thought, what, <clears throat> what is the, how do I get through so many briefs and how do I get through so many um, headhunting campaigns? And I think, I mean, I don't want to rewrite recruitment. I don't want to tell you how to change your desk. But I think what I can give you is a slice of the brief comes into <clears throat> how do I get all the material up and running so that we can run that search. And for me, it's a really tight process there. And if I keep this little bit tight from client giving me the brief to having all my material done and ready to rock and roll, it's probably a 30-minute exercise. But a lot of people waste time putting gaps between steps you're in the zone when you take that brief. Don't get out of that zone. So I want to run you through that really quickly now for you. So if I get a call, a team's meeting or a meeting with a client and they want to give me a brief for a new role that's on, great. Here we go. I take copious amounts of notes. We all have our job spec forms. <clears throat> We've all got the questions that we have to ask that make sense to us, puts us in the picture of what they want. It's going to help us find these people. But for me, beyond salary, role, who they're reporting to, anything of interest. To me, the thing I'm hunting for most, and when you are a specialist in your market, this is super important, is finding the angle. What is the angle that this one, what, what, what stands out as the angle for this role? <clears throat> so I, I work with consultancies. Consultants have timesheets. I had a client, he gave me a brief, very mundane. It was very run of the mill. Didn't stand out. It was okay. It was a bit of an interesting story there. But right at the end, he said to me, "Oh, I said to him, I don't know what the angle is. I'm trying to, I'm trying to work out how I differentiate you guys." He said to me, "Oh, we don't have timesheets." Boom. There's the angle, right? So <clears throat> for me, the job spec is the job spec, but I need to find the angle. The angle now anchors the um, head on scripts. It anchors the job advertisements. It, um, it anchors the in, in mails that I send out because once you've got that common thread that runs through, it's very easy to run that narrative and it's going to resonate with someone, that angle. That might not appeal to everyone, but you want to really appeal to the few people that, that will be interested in this job. So it starts, A, with the brief, writing copious notes. I go in bullet point form and I just write bullet points in an email. That's it. It's, it's, that's it. I don't even have a template. I just go through my email, ask the questions I ask, and I'd write bullet points and I make sure I have a very clear angle. The moment I hang up that phone call or I finish that meeting, it is blackout zone. It is lockdown zone for me. Phone goes on silent. I do not speak to anyone. And everyone knows Brett needs 15 minutes. And in that 15 minutes, because I'm in the zone, I'm, it's the freshest that information is, I will then write, I'll clean up the bullet points with the view that this is, I could almost copy and paste those bullet points and post them on Seek as an ad. Don't always advertise, but the the bullet points need to be sequential thinking, need to stand out like a job ad, and then that at least then that copy is done. I forward that to my team who then turn them into ads and load them up. I then take that bullet point 
and I go to my next item, which I write, which is my LinkedIn script. And I write the LinkedIn script. I have a very, very precise way of doing it. I get about 30 or 40% click rate or open rate or response rate on my emails. It's very high compared to the industry, I'm told. I could be wrong. Hopefully yours is higher. Um, and I turn it into a script for LinkedIn and I load that script into LinkedIn as a script. That's it. Then, then I go out of lockdown mode. And why do I do that? Because from taking the brief to then writing the ad to then getting it, that is the material you need and all you need for a search. You might, you might have a fourth step, which might be um, create a, a, a PDF brief that you can send to the candidates, but really it's, it's going to be very similar to the material that you've already written. Um, I can now go away for a week and do other activities and whatever, and I can come back to it, and I don't have to reimagine, rethink, rekindle um, that that job spec and try to uh, get the cogs working. What was the angle again? What was the you know, the energy you get out of that meeting is the the most purest, most exciting you, you know most excited you'll be for that brief is just after the brief, right? So capture it, bottle it, write it up. And then you can move on. You can, I can come back weeks later after I've taken that brief. It doesn't matter. I already know the type of profile I want. But all I have to do is go to my projects on LinkedIn, go to my headhunting lists within Bullhorn. I've got the material to then flick out, make the calls, whatever you need to do. So I hope that helps someone. For me, that's how I get through 700K worth of placements a year. That's how I can have time to run a business and do a podcast um, and not lose my mind in the process. So I hope that helped you. If you got any value out of today's episode, please subscribe, join the mailing list, follow us on LinkedIn, comment, share. It helps the world go around. We love it. We appreciate it. Thank you. That's all we have time for you today. Um, and as always, may all your deals come true.